We are here to talk about extended reality in healthcare and life sciences with the HoloLens 2. The agenda for today, we will be introducing SphereGen Technologies and Microsoft and our partnership. Myself, my name is Chris Rose, I'm an account executive with SphereGen Technologies. Also on the call is Rody Center, who's the general manager of the Mixed Reality Program with Microsoft. Also from the SphereGen team, we have Will Feeney and Andrew Guagliardo from our Mixed Reality team. So we're going to introduce you know, who we are as a partnership with Microsoft. We're going to let Rody go over what Microsoft's program around Mixed Reality and HoloLens 2 has been. Then we're going to get into live demonstrations of Remote Assist. We're also going to show live demonstrations of Guides program from Microsoft, as well as a custom application that we've created for the HoloLens. As I mentioned in the end, we're going to field questions. To give you some background for anybody unaware of who we are as a company, Sphergen Technologies is a Microsoft Mixed Reality partner. We're the first in New England to that respect. We were founded in 2008, maintain clients on a global scale throughout North America, Europe, the Caribbean, and Asia. We deliver to clients from where I'm sitting today in New Haven, Connecticut, next to Yale University. We also have delivery centers out of Pune, India, Zurich, Switzerland, and Ireland. As an organization, we maintain an emphasis in diversity and inclusion, and we were proudly nominated by an HLS group at Microsoft for a Partner of the Year nomination for one of our custom applications in that respect. We do maintain a specialization in medical device and pharma manufacturing, as well as in the healthcare provider space. As an organization, we utilize agile methodology in our software development, and you will see some of our custom products that we've created for the HoloLens that we do support in our own. As an organization, we are known for four main offerings. We are here to talk about mixed reality with HoloLens uh, 2 today, but we do do development for a variety of, of virtual and mixed reality headsets. We also maintain an application <laughs> modernization practice uh, so medical application development or system integration and cloud conversions of applications as well as a legacy support practice so we support code for clients as well and lastly robotic process automation a partner with power automate and microsoft's product for rpa and it's making quite a movement in the provider space we're going to talk about our mixed reality journey and show you some examples live with the hololens 2 uh, focusing on remote assist in the hololens in cross-continental surgery there's going to be examples of using remote assist to break fix pieces of equipment that have been down, as well as using the guides program from Microsoft to help skill up employees. But I did mention we do have some custom products and we will touch on those as well. But at this point, I'd like to stop sharing and hand it over to Rody to introduce Microsoft. Thanks, Chris. Uh, it's great to meet you all. I um, appreciate the opportunity to come and join SphereGen today. As Chris mentioned, my name is Rody, and I am the general manager of Microsoft's global mixed reality business while this load slide tries to load up there. Um, I perhaps have the best job in the world. Um, my team and I spend every single day helping customers and partners drive material business transformation with mixed reality. But more importantly in the job is learning from our customers, um, customers like you, what you're trying to do with the technology so that together we can actually push this category forward. Um, and can you confirm those slides have loaded on your side? That was a pretty slow load. I do have a visual on mine, yes. Perfect, awesome. All right, so the momentum to date in healthcare has been significant, and that is across the entire ecosystem from pharmaceutical companies needing remote ways to share their science, to accelerate discovery and development, to remotely supporting clinical trials, to standing up additional production facilities, right? Training workers while reducing procedural non-compliance and increasing yields, to med tech companies seeking to do audits and inspections remotely, to train their workers more quickly, um, in the face of higher turnover and to make staff more productive, but also safe on the job, transforming things like field service in the wake of limited travel, where downtime really just could not be afforded, all the way through to providers who are adopting mixed reality to effectively treat patients more safely, rapidly able to redeploy and retrain their staff, while at the same time coping with an increasing number of affected patients. And this momentum, is only expected to continue. Analysts are projecting healthcare to be the fastest growing industry over the next five years. So 
I guess that's my way of saying your timing is good. The timing is now. Uh, Microsoft views mixed reality as one of a very short list of technologies along things like AI and quantum that will fundamentally transform the way that we live and with mixed reality, the way that we collaborate. It represents what we consider the next wave of computing. So up until a little more than a decade ago, right, computers were largely relegated to desktops, laptops, programs were running locally. PCs were great because they brought the computing power to many, but they lack any contextual awareness, right? And you're interacting through a point and click of a mouse. Then transition over the last decade with the growth of the intelligent edge and the intelligent cloud, we start to see capabilities of mobile devices dramatically increasing as workloads are offloaded to the cloud. Smartphones, again, great, right? They brought on the go computing and they start to introduce contextual awareness. We get things like GPS, where I am in the world, helping with navigation, slightly more natural interaction, swipe and touch even voice coming in, but it's really with mixed reality where we usher in the next wave of computing. This enables to, you to understand the environment around you, one that enables you to intuitively interact with your digital content in that environment, creating this immersive experience. So fundamentally, mixed reality is putting the human at the center of technology in a new way, right? We drive immersion by actually like stepping through our screen where our digital world is now spatially placed around us while we remain present in the physical world. This blending of the two into a single immersive experience from which we operate is what we at Microsoft call mixed reality. So the immersive nature of mixed reality is really driven from how back to advance here. Um, it's really driven from how this powerful computer on your head understands your environment, right? It captures things like boundaries, light, sound, object recognition, location, and then it fuses that with how you intuitively interact through eye tracking, hand tracking, voice control. Um, to empower the people on the front line, right? These are the people working on the patient. They're in the lab, on the manufacturing floor. Um, and so it's with mixed reality that we're able to experience concepts in 3D, which is pretty great because we think in 3D versus that redacted 2D medium that most technology gives us today. Um, there's a cognitive load when we translate natively 3D concepts like the human body or a machine from 2D, say a CT scan, back to 3D. It introduces the opportunity for air, but not only that, um, you step away from the work, right? You look away from the patient or the machine to refer to that 2D content, and then you go back into your operation. So by bringing the data, spatially placing it in the context of what you're working on is what opens up significant possibility for that front line. These workers, they're often the ones that are closest to your product, closest to the patient, closest to the customer. So before we dive into the actual technology that enables the experience, I wanna just touch on a few of the general use cases that have really broad applicability across the healthcare ecosystem with proven ROI. The first one, remote collaboration. That ability for the people on the front line to connect with an expert anywhere in the world in under a minute, and for that expert to not only see the frontline workers environment as though they were actually standing there with them, but to actually reach in to their environment digitally to annotate, overlay a holographic arrow, indicating what vial the lab operator should mix in or what type of incision to make, pulling in other relevant data for reference, right? Dialing in another expert if you need, recording that call for future reference. It's by troubleshooting those problems in real time and eliminating travel that we start to drive major costs out of the equation. The NHS reduced the time that their staff spent in those high risk areas at the peak of the pandemic by 83%. And they saved over 700 items of PPE per week, right? So remote collaboration is also being used for things like remote inspections and audits with regulators, suppliers, as well as internal teams. 
Uh, we have one pharmaceutical customer who's now using uh, HoloLens 2 for remote um, audits and inspections and visits with the FDA, uh, which is really interesting. Microsoft also uses it for our own data center audits. Um, really cutting down the time it takes to do an audit and allowing our people to do other things. Um, immersive training and workflows is the second core scenario that we see the greatest momentum. That need to find new and advanced training modalities um, for making healthcare safer has really been growing due in part to a decreased opportunity for clinical training hours with actual patients, but also just this increasing turnover that we're seeing across industries. And so whether you're in a hospital, in a lab, in a pharmacy, on the manufacturing floor, having holographic instructions compared to 2D manuals, people are training faster, but not only that, right, you're attaining more. So further, you can use those 3D holographic digital twins of equipment so people can train from anywhere. And the, the kicker here is that you don't actually have to take that machine out of production, right? Which is costly from a yield perspective. Many, many customers using this, Thermo Fisher is one, they've improved their employee productivity and retention while also reducing the, the training costs and cutting the training time by 60%. Shiba Medical as well is using this to teach biotechnicians how to use a new machine to operate in really high stakes ICU environments in under 20 minutes. So it's pretty powerful technology. And then like take those step-by-step -step holographic instructions actually into the workflow for standard operating procedure execution to mitigate errors during drug development or uh, and reduce procedural non-compliance or on any other complex task. Um, not only by spatially placing that data right where the work is happening, which keeps the worker in their flow state, we start to dramatically reduce the time it takes to do the task. So errors and time reduction. And by capturing each procedure completed through a HoloLens and a workflow app, and then integrating that into a manufacturing execution system or a lab execution system for log history, for example, we are really at Microsoft are seeing the potential for this to transform things like GXP compliance. Um, simulation sort of by extension from training, um, highly immersive risk free way to do that learn by doing, uh, interacting with holograms into a patient simulator so that students can practice uh, really complicated uh, situations. And then um, design and prototyping sales and service. Imagine converting a 3D CAD file to a digital twin to see a holographic version of a med device at scale. You can then evaluate right different variants of that design in minutes. You can collaborate with people that are in person with you as well as remotely. We have customers using immersive sales to showcase their product differentiation. This became key in the pandemic when we couldn't get field sellers out into the field um, and then really enabling the customers to virtually inter interact with that machine. Um, Striker is a great example. They use uh, Microsoft's mixed reality in their sales process for operating room layout. So multiple surgical disciplines are sharing operating rooms, but those specialties have widely differing needs um, when it comes to the configuration and the setup. Um, and obviously the equipment placement is pretty critical from an ergonomics perspective and a task perspective. Um, so they adopted mixed reality to reduce the design time and errors, um, as well as uh, allowing their facilities to open faster. And then the last one in the surgical world just continues to rely on two dimensional imaging technology to understand and operate on pretty incredibly complex patient pathology. So using HoloLens 2 holographic visualization for surgical navigation is really decreasing complications and improving patient outcomes while lowering the overall surgical cost. But most customers are using this technology again they're starting with that remote assist remote collaboration scenario and training and workflows because the roi is fast and it's pretty high um, these are the scenarios that have high applicability whether you're in a clinical scenario or on a manufacturing floor and so today we'll demo both of those in a minute but just before we get there i want to quickly take you through the underlying technology that is enabling these experiences so Microsoft has a platform approach to mixed reality. So we span edge, those devices at the bottom, all the way through the cloud layer. Across that edge, Microsoft is building a platform to support modern mobile phones through to our best-in-class HoloLens device, that mixed reality experience, to full virtual uh, Windows holographic headsets. And we really are thinking about like the right tool for the job. 
we're also really heavily invested in a set of cloud services to make it easier to develop an immersive and mixed reality experiences. Those are the services that partners like SpearGen use, hopefully abstract that out for the end customer into the application. And that brings us to the application layer. We have both Microsoft first party applications, as well as a very diverse partner ecosystem of applications that are delivering that out of box rapid time to value for our customers. HoloLens 2 is setting the high water mark for a spatial computing head mounted display. Its capabilities within the headset are many, one of which is the ability to see a hologram, right? Presenting that stereoscopic layer of light back on your eye. The device is enterprise grade, leverages things like Intune and AAD. Security, right? That's very paramount to many of our customers in the healthcare industry and IP sensitive environments, pharmaceutical and such. Microsoft's own data centers, actually, as I mentioned, we use this device in those environments and we had to take it through a, a full 10 point security check um, and deemed it to be a zero trust device. So it was cleared for use. Uh, the device uses iris recognition for secure sign on, which is one of the most secure biometric frameworks that exists. Um, but it also means you don't actually have to break your flow when you put the device on to sign in, right? Surgeons in the room, puts it on and off they go into their workflow. Um, and last year, we launched the industrial edition HoloLens. This was born out of customer collaboration, both in the healthcare sector as well as in the semiconductor spec uh, sector. It's designed, built and tested to support clean room and those intrinsically safe environments meeting particle emission standards. It's also class one div two certified. Um, so that's a great device uh, really oriented for the healthcare industry. And our mixed reality cloud services, these are market leading. This is one place where Microsoft's really far ahead. Our Azure spatial anchors are geared towards design and prototyping collaboratively while you're remote in a shared experience. So basically it enables you to map, persist and restore 3D content at real world scale across devices. So you can imagine collaborating with people locally as well as people far away, whether you're on a mobile phone or on a HoloLens and making sure that whoever logs in from their vantage point, that content is anchored spatially in the right way. Azure Remote Rendering is a service that renders really high quality 3D content by leveraging powerful GPUs in Azure and then streaming mm. that real time down to the remote edge device, such as the HoloLens. So depending on your workload, the device itself can render about 150,000 polygons, but with a service like ARR, you're actually get into the millions, right? So when you need really, really high fidelity, um, this service is really designed for that. And then Azure Object Anchors is a really powerful tool that's used in our guides application. You'll see that later. Um, it automatically aligns and anchors 3D content to real world objects versus spaces like spatial anchors and using object recognition, right? So you walk up to a machine and the object's anchor loads, that content loads and off the work goes right into their holographic guided experience. Um, and then building on that device and platform layer, we have the application layer. Two applications um, within Microsoft's business applications portfolio, Dynamics Remote Assist and Guides, Remote Assist is that over the shoulder expert experience that we talked about um, when any every minute of downtime can be super costly. Um, whether that's costly in terms of money or human life, this, this scenario is really powerful. Um, it's available on HoloLens too, but also modern mobile devices. And then RA integrates the power platform in other enterprise applications like field service and OneDrive and its backbone is Teams, right? Which enables many of you to build on the investment you're already making in Microsoft's collaboration tools. So I want to pass it over to Chris now to really bring it to life with a customer story and some live demos. Appreciate it, Rody. Thanks so much. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen quickly. Great, we have a visual, Rody. Yep, you're yep, loaded. Yeah. Thank you. So as already mentioned, we're going to get into the live demonstrations with HoloLens around remote assist and guides. Prior to that, we do have one video of a use case we did with a client of Microsoft's in conjunction with Microsoft and supporting them to implement HoloLens for this use case of conducting um, shared surgical knowledge across disparate sites. So we're talking New York City to Uganda. That's what this looks like. 
remote assist pin. Good morning, Dr. Marin. Hi, Joseph. Uh, what do you have today? We have a um, four years old girl. Shared surgical knowledge is the basis behind our program. It begins with a long-standing mission at Mount Sinai to provide global surgical health to places around the world which are underserved. The Chibirwa Surgical Center in the eastern region of Uganda is a sustainable program that we can provide affordable, safe surgery to everyone. We wanted to get rid of the thought that surgery is very expensive and can only be afforded by the rich. So our goal has been to look at these two questions of too expensive and too complicated and find solutions. It is unlikely to be solved by exporting or importing surgeons into regions of need, but finding more efficient ways to use technology to share surgical knowledge. Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 have been game changers as it relates to being able to share ideas and technology around the world. We've been able to start practicing telesurgery where I can invite the assistance of an expert from any part of the world. The Dynamics 365 with remote assist coupled with the whole lens technology allows us to have surgeons operating with Uganda completely connected with surgeons here in Mount Sinai. Through this HoloLens, Dr. Marin is able to have a real-time view of 7,000 miles away. Our team's connection provides us with an enormously interactive capability. I'm not just looking at the pictures. I can interact with those images and that video. And between 65 and 70% of surgery that's done throughout the world can be done in a facility like this. This young girl comes in with a significant problem that isn't commonly encountered in this community is something we see here at Mount Sinai multiple times on a weekly basis. What was your plan in terms of incisions? So my initial plan was to make an elliptical incision. Sometimes it's actually helpful to do a circular incision. I'm just gonna trace out for you what I'm thinking. It was so clear now how I would have approached it would not have offered me the advantage. They're nurses, they're anesthesiologists, they're surgeons, all get confident, get capable of doing things. So the ability to evolve in the technology allows us to really begin to think about sharing surgery in a whole new way. I readily see how we're gonna to begin to integrate this into our residency and surgical training programs in this institution, where we can begin to advance independent surgical skills with our surgical trainees on a more rapid basis. This will form a very important part of the next generation of education of surgeons. The Hall Lens 2 equipped with Dynamic 365 Remote Assist is just the beginning. We've gone on to treat over 400 patients and diagnose, manage over 3,000 patients. We have had 100% success rates. We've not had any fatality here. I would attribute this technology that we are using the ability to do something that can be scaled much farther beyond an individual's technical skills and take it from one person to a thousand people is one of the most exciting things I've experienced in my professional life. So that was an example of remote assist uh, in a surgical use case, right? So we're here also to talk about how we can leverage remote assist to break fixed pieces of equipment. What we're gonna do now is transition over to the live feed through the hollow lens, and I'm gonna walk my counterpart, Will, through a brick fix on a piece of equipment. So I'm gonna stop sharing my, my screen. Here you'll see we have Will's field of view. Hello, Will. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm really well, thank you. What do we have going on today? Uh, we have some problems with the sauna tech here. I was wondering if you can help me out. Sure, sure. So it's not in operation, is that correct? Mm, nope. Doesn't look like it. All right, excellent. Well, I'm going to share across a file to you. It will be a PDF on this piece of equipment, the Sonatech. I believe this is the S3. If you ever can't reach me, you'll have this in queue and you'll be able to reference it. But since I'm on the line, I'll be able to get you up and running, I believe. As you see, that document is coming through right now. Sure. Thank you. I'll keep this for later. I appreciate that. All right, so if we look back at the machine, please. If you look down at the emergency stop at the base of it, mm -hmm. make sure you're in the correct position so it's not shutting the machine off. Yep. Okay, now you look below the machine, please. There's an air compressor. Yep. 
Wonderful. I'm going to call out a switch I'd like you to put back. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. If you could flip that switch back. No, excellent. And I'll put it back the other way as well. Thank you. And then I'm going to call out the gauge down here that needs to be above 80 PSI. Uh, yep, looks above 80 PSI. Wonderful. I'm going to remove those annotations and ask you to go back up to the top of the Sonatech. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, I'd like you to pay attention right here, please. I'm going to call out a button that we need to hit to reset. OK. So if you press that button, you'll notice it's an LCD screen. It's not, yeah, it's not called out. Awesome. So we're in the right spot there. And then if I remove that arrow, you will see right here that we are at the correct operating temperature, which is 180 okay. degrees. Wonderful. I'm going to remove that annotation. Now I ask you to look to the right of the machine, please. About halfway up, you'll see two valves, one with a black top and one with a red top. Okay. Can you rotate that valve with a red top 180 degrees counterclockwise? Sure. Thank you. Excellent. So now if we look down at the base of the machine again, please. Perfect. I'm going to ask that you please press these two knobs, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And in doing so, you should have operation. Wonderful. Looks like you're back in, in the works. So if you run into any other issues, please feel free to ring me. But it uh, looks like you're back in operation. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. So that was an example of what we can do with remote assist around a break fix of a piece of machinery, right? I'm not on site. Will happens to be there. I was able to guide him uh, the proper steps to get that piece of equipment up and running as opposed to having to get in my car on a train or fly to his site. Next, we're going to demonstrate the power of Dynamics 365 Guides, which again is an out-of-the-box application from Microsoft built to run on the HoloLens. Uh, there is a mobile version on the way as, as well. Um, with guides, you're allowed to step-by-step -step holographic instructions uh, and be hands-free while doing so. It is easy to use out of the box. I myself don't have a technology background. I'm not a programmer or developer, but guides is very familiar to me because it's very much like PowerPoint. Authoring a guide is very similar to creating PowerPoints. Um, you're also able to connect to your business data on the back end. So what does that look like? Conjunction with guides and linking up with uh, platforms like Power BI from Microsoft is it leverages uh, performance data in real time with dashboards. So we're able to gain insights and also call out things such as if I'm a trainee, let's say it's myself and Will going through a guide, it takes me 12 minutes and it takes Will eight minutes. It's easy to identify the steps that I might need supplemental training on or my call out that I'm not qualified for this type of specific role. Likewise, we have lifted guides into or uh, standard operating procedures from clients into guides and notice that all the trainees run into the same problem at the same point. Often then it's recognized that it's not so much the trainees, it's the training material that might need some enhancements or critiquing. So, well, are, are we close with guides? Yep, we're all set. All right. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to go back into the field of view for Will, and he's going to walk you through a guide that's going to train him on this piece of equipment that we just did a break fix on. So Will, we have your visual, and it could show us what we're seeing. Sure. Both okay. So here we have Microsoft Guides. On the left here, you see a, a panel with text, and then imagery is more to the left with the uh, machine I have here. And then we see a nice little line that goes to the machine. It shows me my QR code that I previously just scanned. To maneuver through this guide, you can use this little arrow right here to just uh, look at it for a little bit, and then it will go to the next step. So as the, as the guide reads before everything is set up, it's important that you note the location of the emergency stop button. If at any time you stop the machine, press this button, and then you can see a hologram here showing off the emergency stop. If I ever need to do it, I can press it. To reset the machine after engaging the emergency stop, pull the button out. You will see the reset button on the touch display, which you can press the machine back into normal operation. So here, pull the machine out, and then there will be a reset button there. This is an active operation area for the thermal press. 
keep everything except the materials you're working with clear of this area while the machine is active. So again, if you look at this line, this little dotted line here, you can see a uh, 3D box hologram here with a little caution area, basically like do not touch this area. To prep the Sonatec uh, S3 for use, first start up the air compressor located below the machine, flip the red lever back to start the compressor. Again, here we have the red line. Go down here, we see that the lever here is pressed in already from our previous step. So that's good. Next, power the machine on. It's already on, but there you go. Showing a nice hologram. Twist the red knob on the side of the machine counterclockwise to start pressurizing the machine. As you can see here, we did this last time. Check the pressure gauge on the air compressor is at least 60 PSI. Go down a dotted line here. Read the valve, it says 60, above 60, yep. Check the temperature on the machine as at least 170 degrees. Check here, it's about 180, so it's above 170, so it's all good. The machine is now ready for use to engage the machine, ensure the active area is clear, and push the buttons on both sides of the machine at the same time. So you can see here and here. Press it in. And there you go. Thanks, Will. So as you see here, Will is navigating this with the cursor in the center of the screen, the white dot, much like a cursor in a mouse. He's using the headsets on his head. He's using his head to guide through this. He can also use his hands if needed, but the goal is to be hands free. Will, can you show? OK, thank you. I'd like to show how you can take this panel. Um, you mm -hmm. can bring it closer to you. You could put it further away. Thank you. And you also have the ability to unpin that. So it's currently, I believe, pinned in place. But if Will were to move around a large space, there is the option to have that screen follow you where you're going. Um, and what you saw in this guide was the ability using the QR code to utilize the power of spatial anchoring. So all of those holographic representations that you saw, if you took that same QR code that's running this guide and put it on the same machine anywhere in the world, all of those holograms would line up exactly as Will saw today. All right, well, I really appreciate you showing us that. Thanks so much. I'm going to take back over. Thank you. All right, Andrew, are you on? Hello, Chris. Yep, I'm here. Wonderful. I'm going to let you speak to this one. Uh, Andrew Guagliardo is one of our lead mixed reality developers, and this is a project that he's been hands on on. So, Andrew? Sure. So folks, we've talked about, you know, Microsoft's first party products, but, um, you know, you can also do custom software development on the HoloLens. Um, we're going to show a little video here that was a simple proof of concept that we put together, basically to allow um, somebody to work with a cobot. So that's this robot you're seeing here. And the goal here was to kind of show how um, a visualization could help make an engineering assessment. So there's this wing that basically uh, has some defects on it, and the cobot is going to go and grind down the wing to try to remove the defect. After it gets done doing a cycle of grinding, it's going to hold the wing up in front of a 3D scanner, which is then going to scan the wing, generate a 3D model, push it to the Azure cloud, and then that Azure Cloud 3D model can be viewed on the HoloLens and assessed using a heat map, which makes the defects really obvious and easy to see um, in a way that might be a little bit more difficult if you were just looking at the actual wing itself. Using that information, an engineer can then make an assessment about whether or not more grinding needs to be done in order to continue to remove the defect or if it appears to be back into tolerance. This was um, particularly interesting uh, for this client to work out as a proof of concept because this cobot can basically run without somebody being physically present. And in this way, somebody who is off site could basically do assessments of how the work is going with the robot and make determinations about if the workflow should continue or stop without needing to be uh, physically present. So this grinding cycle is done. And so now this uh, sensor is taking a 3D scan of the wing. And then in a moment here, we'll actually see a visualization of a heat map showing uh, different heights and defects on the wing uh, inside the HoloLens.
So the first example we're going to see here is actually seeing the um, holographic heat map overlaid on the physical model itself. And so you can see here she's wearing the HoloLens. Um, she is opening up just a couple of different menus here. And then in a moment, we'll get a view from inside the headset. And so here you can see a representation um, of the model. This is overlay from the scan. And green means inside tolerance and red means out of tolerance. And this is an example of somebody viewing similar scans remotely and checking the updated scans as the grinding process uh, continued. They're also able to manipulate this model, um, change the size or you know, look at it in more detail and rotate it. And by using this heat map, you can see which is in and out of tolerance, you know, red showing things that are you know, defects that need to be taken care of and blue showing cavities that need to be filled. And basically this was just a you know, custom developed proof of concept to explore ways you can visualize engineering data in the HoloLens. Thank you, Andrew. I'd like to share a couple other examples of uh, some custom applications or custom work done for the HoloLens to show you the power of the headset and what can be accomplished. So we worked with a provider out of uh, Canada who had come to us, a surgeon who had asked, would it be possible to get the same visual uh, feel for a laparoscope stream, uh, as opposed to using the tower that he'd been using for years. Uh, after had using that tower and looking up at that angle for years, he complained of chronic neck pain and was asking if we could get a good enough feed into the HoloLens where he could put that screen in a place more comfortable. We worked with the medical device uh, manufacturer who had the tower, they shipped us the tower and we were able to do that. This is what that looks like. Hi, I'm Dr. David Pearlstone. Today we're going to take a look at comparing a standard diagnostic laparoscopy using a standard laparoscopy tower versus doing it with the Microsoft HoloLens. So first we're going to go and take a look at a standard diagnostic laparoscopy using our simulation set here. You can see we have an excellent view of our rubber kidney inside the box here. Excellent depth of field, excellent visualization, and excellent resolution. Now let's take a look at how we can do this using the Microsoft HoloLens 2. You'll notice I now have this screen in front of me and I can bring it very close to where I want to be. And now I'll go ahead and grab my scope. You'll notice I get the same level of depth of field, the same clarity, the same lighting, the same resolution as I had previously. I can move this screen to any location. This is actually physically considerably more comfortable to be looking down at this angle, I have to say. Or even we can go to an angle that's probably comfortable for a lot of people, which is looking up. This is just one example of how SphereGen Technologies and DICOM Director are bringing the latest breakthroughs in surgical innovation to the operating room using the Microsoft HoloLens 2. So what's next then? Uh, getting started on an MR journey. Some of you may already be down this path. Some of you may be looking about how we can go about implementing uh, mixed reality and HoloLens 2 into your programs. Um, it's great to have uh, uh, key stakeholders involved in this. And very definitely from what we've seen to run pilots and proof of concepts before going into full scale deployment. How do we help clients in this respect? Uh, we do help with remote assistant guides implementation. We help train the trainers usually. So we work with a team within the organization to get them skilled up on everything HoloLens and remote assisting guides. Likewise, we do have clients who do not wish to support that internally. So we support that for them on our own and working with them. Likewise, we also work with clients who have needs for custom application development for the HoloLens and might not have the resources in house to do so. Uh, we have a robust team to do that. Andrew and Will, we saw on this call today. And we can also supply you the headsets. So um, those are just two, a few examples of the products that we have currently on the market, products from the Microsoft and how we've been using them. Happy to field any questions or comments that have come in the chat. So that's the end. And we can certainly go back and, and open up any of these use cases for anybody. All right, with that, I think we're going to wind down the call. It looks like uh, everybody's asked what they needed to ask. Again, I do encourage you, excuse me, to reach out to either Rody or myself if you have questions for Microsoft or for Sphere as a Microsoft partner of mixed reality. And we'll be happy to speak with everybody offline.